helps the Sequoia to enforce prohibition. And they put the Sequoia on the Potomac River and on other uh, bodies of water. And the uh, rum runners during prohibition thought that it would be a rich yachtsman. They would come up to sell the liquor. And the uh, feds would jump off and arrest them. At the time, Herbert Hoover was Secretary of Commerce under Harding. And he would leave the Department of Commerce building in Washington, which today is called the Herbert Hoover building. And he would go to the embassies in Washington and drink because they were exempt from prohibition. When Hoover became president, he uh, said, we don't need this accord to enforce prohibition. We'll use it uh, as the presidential yacht. How did you uh, end up as the owner of this, uh, as the presidential yacht? Uh, almost six years ago, uh, I drove down to Norfolk, Virginia and met with the shipyard that owned her. And uh, the shipyard was undergoing a corporate reorganization. And I knew that they were going to sell this uh, special National Historic Landmark. And I negotiated to buy it. But it was, uh, it was sold originally by the government when Jimmy Carter was president. How did that come to pass? Uh, Jimmy Carter, of course, the Georgia peanut farmer who decided to uh, discard the trappings of the presidency, opted to sell the Sequoia. And the government held a sealed bid sale. And there were a number of people who uh, endeavored to buy the Sequoia, three of whom uh, were unsuccessful bidders, were Arm & Hammer, Evil Knievel, and Larry Flint. <laughs> what kind of use is it put to right now, Billy? She's um, used by uh, uh, many dignitaries. Just last night, for example, uh, Speaker Hastert, uh, Governor Romney, uh, Senator Dole, and other dignitaries used her. The night before, about 20 uh, ambassadors. So she's used by uh, a lot of the Washington elite and a lot of the non-elite. Uh, for example, uh, <coughs> we uh, take out Walter Reed amputees on a number of cruises. We sponsor a Sea Scout troop. So uh, she's put to good use. I understand this was the first handicap access boat because of uh, President Roosevelt. We're told that, uh, that uh, they put an elevator in for Roosevelt, which brought him from the main salon down below uh, to the bedrooms. And um, the crew members uh, had to carry him topside, which he certainly disliked. And uh, when Lyndon Johnson came aboard, he said that the Sequoia did not need an elevator. It needed a bar. So. Today we have a very fine bar and unfortunately we do not have an elevator. Now, there's a lot of history on this boat, uh, Mr. Silversmith. Uh, President Roosevelt and his Supreme Commander in Europe, uh, uh, General Eisenhower, met here. Uh, uh, what do they talk about? Well, they planned European strategy and uh, D-Day. So uh, there's a great connection with the Sequoia and America's uh, military efforts, including uh, planning World War II. Uh, Truman also worked on board uh, contemplating dropping the nuclear bomb. In 1946, Truman hosted the first nuclear arms control conference. Uh, later, Lyndon Johnson decided to escalate the war in Vietnam from the Sequoia when riding with the Commandant of the Marine Corps. And of course, Nixon and Kissinger planned the withdrawal from Vietnam on the Sequoia. Uh, you say they planned dropping the atom bomb. Uh and uh, Emperor Hirohito was, was, a, uh, was a guest on this. Yes. Well, that's, a, that's an irony, isn't there it? There is certainly an irony. About 30 years uh, after he decided to drop the bomb, Emperor Hirohito was a guest of uh, President Gerald Ford. And uh, he wrote on the Sequoia. And, and in fact, pictures were published throughout Japan of uh, Emperor Hirohito and his wife uh, sailing on the Sequoia. Now, the table right behind me here in the, in the salon was used by Harry Truman for poker games. Uh, I see the little card said uh, he occasionally played poker. He played poker all the time. Uh, has other, has, did other presidents use this boat for, for amusement and fun and games? Uh, very much so. In fact, uh, the Sequoia was probably used more for unofficial uh, visits than official visits. Uh, some of the presidents used it for uh, official purposes, such as lobbying. Lyndon Johnson lobbied, for example, for all the civil rights legislation on board. But most of the presidents, uh, ranging from a Harry... Truman playing poker, to Richard Nixon uh, escaping the woes of Watergate, uh, to John F. Kennedy. They all enjoyed the Sequoia uh, for their personal uses. Now, it was used a lot in the Nixon administration. I was uh, privileged to be a, a guest of Secretary of Defense uh, Mel Laird, Elvin Laird, during the Nixon administration. But uh, Nixon himself used it all, more than any other president, didn't he? That's correct. Uh, according to Captain Combs, who took Nixon out, he said that Nixon used the Sequoia over a hundred times. And uh, he did a number of uh, important events on board, both uh, official and unofficial. Uh, from an official standpoint, he hosted Brezhnev in the first uh, Soviet American nuclear arms control conference, the start of the end of the Cold War. He also reportedly decided to resign on the Sequoia. But he, uh, 
he he felt the White House, we're told, was bugged during Watergate, and he wanted to go out on the Sequoia, which he felt was safe for him. So he used it over a hundred times, uh, usually with just his family. And now the big question for Gary Silversmith, owner of the presidential yacht Sequoia. Mr. Silversmith, if President Bush were to call you this morning and ask you, gee, I would really like to use the uh, yacht for uh, some visitors to the White House, uh, what would you say and how soon could you get it ready for his use? I'd say what time, uh, give us five minutes. I would, I would welcome him uh, at any time and I would welcome any president on the support. Has he used it yet? Unfortunately, no. Gary Silversmith, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And thank you for being in the Novak Zone. And you can catch more of Bob Novak on the Capitol Gang. Tonight's focus troubles.